Hi everyone. This video is on problems uh, about uh, SF and BM of beams. It's a past paper and it's uh, on weighted beam. A uniform beam AB, 16 meter long, weighing 112 kgs, is supported at a point 2 meters from end A and at a point 4 meters from end B. It carries a point load of 13 kgs at the mid length. Draw the SFBF of the diagram of the beam and state their values at point 2.55 meters from end B. So it's a beam and they we mark it as a b as given in the question so a and the other end should be b 16 meter long and weighing 112 kgs so it's uh, the 112 kg is that means it's uniformly distributed along the entire length of the beam the supports are two meters from end a and two meters uh, four meters from and B. So they are the marked as R C and R E. Point C and point E they have the supports. There is a point load also acting in the mid length of the beam 13 kgs. Beam is 16 meter long so weight of the beam per meter length will be 112 upon 16 total weight upon length of the beam and we get 7 kgs per meter sign convention we will be using uh, from left of this section the upward force will be positive and the downward force will be negative and if you use the right side of the section then downward force is positive and upward force is negative but we are going to use in this question the left side of the uh, reference section all the forces and moments will be calculated uh, towards the left side of the point similarly hogging moment is negative and sagging moment is positive so in order to calculate reaction support reaction uh, for forces we consider total weight of the beam is acting at the center of gravity of the beam which is at the mid length d at this point d 112 kg only for the purpose of calculating the value of these reaction supports once we got them then uh, we don't use the total weight of the beam at mid length at all we will use the weight per meter the one which is uniformly distributed and that will be 7 kgs per meter so according to the length of the beam uh, beam in consideration the weight of the beam will be calculated lengthwise as per that particular section so for the sake of equilibrium we just equate all the upward acting forces equal to sum of downward acting forces so sum of all upward acting forces should be equal to sum of all downward acting forces to satisfy the equilibrium status of the beam so we have only two forces acting upward the two reaction supports at point c and at point e of the beam named as rc plus re and we have two downward acting for uh, forces one is the weight of the beam total weight of the beam 112 kg and the point load which has been kept at the center of the beam that is 13 kg so 112 plus 13 total is 125 kg so the sum of the reaction forces should be equal to 125 kgs then sum of all the moments it should also be equal to zero for equilibrium 
So we take moments about point C where we have the first support. So here is a beam and this is the point C. We have the support here. So we take moment about this point. This will help us to get the other support at RE because the moment for this support at RC will become zero because we are taking moments about this point. So levers and distances will be taken about point C. So it will be if you write the reaction force at C, you have to multiply it by zero because we are taking moments about this point. There is no lever there. Then the weight of the beam, as I said, it is for the sake of calculating the reaction, we consider it acting at the midpoint of the beam at point D, which should be 8 meters from each end because it's the center. The support is 2 meters inward. So the point D, the mid, mid length of the beam is 6 meters from the support reaction support this point c so 112 kg is the weight of the beam acting downward so if i am taking my moment about point c then this downward acting for weight is going to create a hogging moment because i consider that beam is fixed at point c because i am taking moment about c point c so it is going to bend the beam in a hogging manner. So hogging moment is negative. So we will have minus 112 and distance of the lever from the point C will be 6 meter. Similarly, 13 kg weight acting same place at the mid length. So its lever also from the point C will be 6 meter, this one. So we have two moments which are causing hogging moments both acting downward 112 and 13 they are causing hogging moments so they will be marked as negative here so minus 112 into 6 minus 13 into 6 112 is the weight of the beam and 13 kg is the point load at the mid length of the beam so both will be minus because they are hogging moments. Now the re other reaction support which is at point E here. So if you see is if if I'm taking moment about point C, then this reaction force acting upward is going to cause a sagging moment. So this will be termed as positive plus. RE reaction force at sup, uh, support point E and its distance from point C about which I am taking moments will be 6 plus 4 10 meters. So this becomes my equation for all the moments sum of algebraic sum of all the moments equal to 0. This gives me the RE reaction force at point E 75 kg and the reaction force at point C must be 125 minus 75 because total reaction forces together make 125 kg. So 125 minus 75 will be 50 kg will be the reaction force at point C and 75 kg is at point E. So we should mark them alongside the reaction force here this rc 50 kg and re 75 kg now we move on to the we got the two reaction forces we move on to the sf calculation of sf and then bm we are finding the sf all the calculations will be done to the left of the point okay it's your choice anybody's choice you can do to the right of the point it the answer should always come the same 
left or right doesn't matter it's just the sign convention you have to follow so we are following um, the method which is to the left of the point so shearing force at a is equal to zero because to the left of a there are no weights no forces so to the left of a nothing is there so it's zero then i come to point c now at point c we i have a reaction support which is acting at point c that means it's also like a point force point load or point reactions forces loads acting at a point we need to find the range of the shearing force and main uh, shearing force so range means first i take the algebraic sum of all the weights to the left of the point so to the left of the point c i have a 2 meter beam whose weight should be 2 multiplied by 7 7 kg per meter is of weight so 2 into 7 and it's acting downwards so this force acting downward is minus sign so i have to the left of c i will have minus 14 okay minus 7 into 2 minus 14 then if i take a point just to the right of c just to the right of c a millimeter to the right of c then i also see the reaction force so now the algebraic sum will be the weight of two meter beam acting downward and the reaction force acting upward which is 50 kg so algebraic sum of these two forces so it will be minus 14 minus 14 is uh, is to the left weight of the beam and also now the reaction force at this point c will add up so it will be minus 14 plus 50 equal to plus 36 kg so sf at c is changing from minus 14 kg to plus 36 kg the next point will be d d is the midpoint of the beam okay so algebraic sum of all the forces to the left of d i already have my calculated my force uh, forces at up to point c which is uh, here up to point c i already have plus 36 i carry it forward and now i just need to focus on my length of beam between c and d because up to c i have already calculated my forces just i i will focus between c and d so between c and d the length of the beam is 6 meter so weight will be 6 into 7 minus 42 so it will be plus 36 minus 6 into 7 that will be minus 42 so plus 36 minus 42 gives minus 6 kg that is to the because at d also i have a point load 13 kg point load acting downward so i need to take the range so to the left of d i get minus 6 and then i take the point image just to the right of d and then i check my forces again to the left so then i get 13 kg will get additionally added minus 13 will get added okay so minus 6 comes here carried forward to the left and at point d minus 13 is also acting so together minus 6 minus 13 minus 19 kg so at d sf is changing from minus 6 kg to minus 19 kg 
then move on to point E. Point E has got a re reaction support. Now I already have calculated algebraic sum of all my forces up to point D, which I carried forward minus 19. Minus 19, I carry it forward up to point D. I have my forces algebraic sum minus 19. Now I will see between D and E. So, in addition to that minus 19, between D and E, we have a 4 meter uh, length of the beam. So, 7 into 4, we will have minus 28 kg downward. So minus 19 was to the left and uh, additional between D and E minus 7 into 4 minus 28. So minus 19 and minus 28 will make minus 47 kg. That is to the left of E. And at E I have a 75 kg reaction force which is acting upward positive. So minus 47 will carry forward and all that I have to do is add the 75 kg reaction force to it and I get plus 28 kg. So at E, SF is changing from minus 47 to plus 28. Then move on to the last point B. Up to point E, I have algebraic sum which is plus 28, we carry forward and between B and E, Okay, between B and E, again I have 4 meter length of the beam. So 4 into 7, 28 kg. Minus 28 kg downward. So minus 7 into 4, minus 28. So plus 28 and minus 28 is equal to 0. So these are the uh, uh, SF for values calculated at these points. Um, now I want to you to check something that if you notice that uh, at C, the SF force at point C, SF force was plus 36. And at D, which is the next point after C, at D, mid midpoint, the SF force has changed to minus 6. Minus 6 to minus 19. So from plus 36 to minus 6. Obviously, it is it shows that the SF curve is crossing the baseline from plus 36 from positive side to negative side is moving. So it, that means it is def definitely crossing the baseline. So when it's crossing the baseline, that particular point, the SF will be zero. So somewhere between uh, between point C and D, C, C was plus 36 and D minus 6. So, so between C and D, between point C and D, SF curve is changing direction from positive to negative. So let's assume SF value becomes zero at a point M between C and D. Between C and D, somewhere it is becoming zero, it's crossing the baseline. So let's call that point as M, where curve is crossing the baseline. And point M, let's assume that this point M between C and D where SF is becoming zero, it is X meters from end A of the beam. So obviously, when the SF becomes zero, the bending moment at this point will be maximum. Then we need to include this point in our calculation because the bending moment will be maximum at this point, SF being zero. If we don't include this point, our curve will be wrong. We will get a wrong, uh, the peak of the curve will be wrong. 
it will not reach the peak so that will be a mistake that's why this point where the curve is peaking is becoming maximum bending moment that point must be known where and at that and at that point sf will be zero so if it if this point m is x meters from end a of the beam then am will become equal to we call this as x x meter okay from a and this is the m this is the sf curve sf curve is crossing the baseline here at m is becoming zero here so let's assume am is x meters So what will be the shearing force at point M? Okay, to the left of this point M, I have X meters length of the beam. The weight of this X meters length of the beam will be seven into X. Seven is uh, seven kg per meter is the weight of the beam. So just multiply by the X meters minus because the weight of the beam it is the weight of the beam acting downwards so it will have a minus sign so weight of the beam over this x meters length will be minus 7x and also there is a plus 50 kg reaction force to the left of x so that will also become plus 50 and this is equal to zero because we know that sf at this point m is crossing the baseline and its value is zero so minus 7x plus 50 here it is so this point this point is somewhere between c and d right we have chosen this point M somewhere here, it is just I think left of D and I take the length of this point from A as X meter. So, so SF at this point M, you see how many forces are there to the left of it. One is the uh, beam, weight of the beam. So if the length is X, weight of the beam will be 7X. And then we have this 50 kg of reaction force acting upwards. So minus 7x and plus 50. This is the shearing force to the left of this point M, where SF is becoming zero. So when I equate it to zero, minus 7x plus 50 is equal to zero. X value I get 7.14. Seven point one four three is the distance of this point M from end A. Okay, here is this point M where SF is becoming zero. So A M we have calculated that is seven point one four three and A to C is two meters. So 7.143 minus 2 between C and M, it is 5.143. Between from C to M, it is 5.143. And C to D is 6 meters. So MD, the small triangle MD will be 6 minus 5.143.857. This will be required now when we do the bending moment area under the curve these distances so we have drawn the sf curve from the values we got at a it was zero at c changing from minus 14 to plus 36 it goes up like this vertical at the point load then at d it's becoming minus six so it goes to D minus six, join this, and on the way it's crossing at M, which is where it becomes zero. 
and at D it change it is varying at D from minus 6 to minus 19. So minus 6 going down further minus 19. Okay, then at point E it is changing from minus 47 to plus 28. And then at B again 0. So this is the SF curve. We have included additional point which is which was M because SF is becoming 0 here and we need bending moment which will be the maximum bending moment value at M. Also in the question they have asked SF and BM value at the point uh, 2.55 meter from end B. So what will be the SF at this point I call it as F which is 2.55 meter from end B. So SF at point F 2.55 meter from end B will be. So this this end this end B to F it is 2.55 meter. So I need SF at point F. So beam is 16 meter long. So the remaining length of the beam left of F will be 16 minus 2.55. So remaining length to the left of point F is 13.45 meter multiplied by 7 that's the weight of the beam weight of the beam to the to the left of this point F minus 7 into 13.45 then we have 50 kg plus reaction which is upward plus so then we have a minus 13 kg of point load at midpoint acting downward minus 13 and then we have one plus 75 kg of reaction force at point E. So all these points are to the left of F, all these weights to the left of F and it comes out to be 17.85 kg. This is the sharing force at point, additional point F which they have asked in the question 2.55 meter form and B. Okay, so now we will move on to the bending moment diagram area under the SF curve. So at A, what will be the bending moment? At A, it will be zero because there is no area. Again, bending moment to the left of the point. So the left of A, there is no area under the curve. So it will be zero. The next point is C. To the left of C, we have a triangle. This AC is the base of this triangle, and this is a height. So, area of this triangle is half base, which is 2 meters, and height is 14. This height is 14. So, at C, the bending moment will be. Minus 7 into, into 1, minus 14 kg meter. Okay. And then we, the next point is M. Yeah, next point is M. We got this distance CM. We have calculated 5.143. So, I have Vm uh, up to C. I need the algebraic sum of all the bending moments to the left of point M now. I have got this minus 14, which is up to point C. Now, between C and M, this triangle is there, OCM. And we can calculate again half base into height. Base is 5.143, height is 36. This is the height of this triangle is 36 and the base CM is 5.143. So bending moment at uh, point C, uh, at bending moment at point M, sorry, at point M is, it's uh, minus 14 up to point C, it is minus 14. Then I add to it. 
that area of the triangle which we just found base is 5.143 and the height is 36 into half to so half base is 5.143 height is 36 half base into height that big triangle so algebraic sum will be minus 14 plus 92.574 is 78.57 kg meter 78.57 kg meter is the bending moment at m which is the maximum bending moment because at this point m you can see at this point m sf curve is zero so the bm will be maximum here if we have not if we don't include this point and we go straight to point d on our beam which will come here somewhere that the curve would have been wrong then curve would have gone like this okay. that's why it is very important that if sf is changing direction from positive to negative or negative to positive and it means that the sf curve you can see it, it is becoming zero here that point must be calculated because with the bending moment will be maximum over there for the curve, the peak of the curve. Then at point D, I have bending moments up to point M now. I will subtract this small triangle, MDN, because it's towards the minus side. I will subtract this to get the bending moment at point D. Area under the curve to the left of D, we already have up to m i have already have the area under the curve up to m i just have to subtract this mdn this small triangle mdn i just have to subtract that to get the bm at d so bm at d will be what was the bm at m 78.57 carried forward is plus and that small triangle is below the baseline, so it will be minus. The base is 0.857 and its height is 6 meter divided by 2. And we get that 78.57 minus 2.57 is equal to plus 76 kg meter. Then move on to point E. So first I carry forward the bending moment up to point D plus 76 up to point d i have now between d and e what is the area under the curve so between d and e this between d and e so i can divide this in two parts I can make a rectangle here, 4 meter by 19 meter. This is 19. So 4 by 19 rectangle plus this, that there is a triangle below it. So half base into height, base is 4 meter. And height of this triangle will be 47 is total. 47 minus 19 will be the height of this uh, triangle below this level from here to here so area of this rectangle plus area of this triangle will have to be added to the bm value which is at d which we found at up to d and it's all minus it is below the baseline so let's see what we got okay so plus 76 was up to d point d and minus a rectangle small rectangle which was 19 into 4 and uh, that triangle 28 into 14 upon 2 28 into 4 sorry 4 is the base and how we get 28 28 you get like this because the full height of this line from E downward is 47 and up to here it is 19. 
So 47 minus 19 will be the remaining this height of this triangle, which is below this rectangle here. So rectangle plus triangle bending moment at E. It comes out to be minus 56 kg meter. And the last point, bending moment at B, it should be zero. So minus 56, I have up to E, which I carry forward minus 56. And then after I have it, up to E, I have, then after between B and E, I have a triangle. Base is four meter and the height of the triangle is 28 from the baseline it is 28 so half into 4 into 28 this we add so minus 56 in this we will add that triangle which is 4 meter base and 28 is the height of the triangle upon 2 area of the triangle it becomes minus 56 plus 56 and it is 0 which is right because the curve must close at both the ends, at A as well as at B. So also in the question they have asked at point uh, 2.55 meter from end B, we got the SF, what will be the bending moment at point F, which is 2.55 meter, this point F here, 2.55 meter from point B. This one. This is the point with F. 2.55 meter from end B. So, bending moment at this point will be sum of the area under the curve to the left of this point, complete total. So, no problem. We have here, we have the value of E. So we just have to add this trapezium. So, this is 28. And this is 17.85 kg SF at F. We have calculated there. And uh, this will be 1.45, the height of this trapezium between the parallel sides because total is 4 meter. And they have given 2.55 from end B. So 4 minus 2.55 will be 1.45. So we can just add the area of this trapezium to the BM value at E. So BM value at E was minus 56. We got at E here minus 56 plus that area of the trapezium. Parallel sides 28 plus 17.85, half of the 2 divided by 2 and in and the height 1.45. So it comes out to 22.759 kg meter. Since we have done this question, all points to the left so we continued otherwise if you see that uh, whether you do it to the left or you do it to the right of the point it should not change the va value should be absolutely fine so if i if at f which is just 2.55 meter from this point b if i take the section to the right of it to the right of it then i just have length of the beam which is 2.55 meter multiply it by the by 7 which is 7 kg per meter and i have this is only force to the right of it which will be the value of sf you will find the same you will get the same answer and even for the bending moment, also bending moment, also you have a choice. You can go to the to the left of the point or to the right of the point. To the right of F, I just have this small triangle as my bending moment. And if you solve this small triangle, 
you will get the same answer you can try yourself the answer will be same so in the exam these tricks work the shorter tricks so the shape of the bm curve from a to c it's a slanting line downward so the slope of the curve from a at a the sf is zero and at c it's becoming higher value so the slope of the curve will be also same it will be zero here at a and becoming more at point c so it should go like this see the slope is zero of the curve here at a and at c it is becoming vertical so slope is increasing because slope of the bm curve is same is equal to the sf value then from c to m c to m you can see again slanting line so it will be a parabola bm will be a curve parabola between uh, this point c and m so the curve the slope of the curve because sf value is coming to zero here so the slope is becoming zero slope of the bm curve will become zero at m means it will rise vertically nearly nearly vertical from here and at m it will be curving curving towards the horizontal because slope is becoming less okay then uh, m to n also uh, this m to between m and d is a small value 78 76 small curve will come then from d to e again we have slanting line so you can see the sf value is increasing downward so the slope also will increase increasing slope means the slope will be nearly vertical and here it will be curving because here slope is less so it will be curving here and becoming nearly vertical at this point so this is the curve it's curving here on top and then becoming nearly vertical because slope is increasing then the last one is this slanting line between e and b again slope is maximum here at e and becoming zero at b so it will curve at b curve towards the horizontal at b and at e it will be nearly vertical going up and then becoming curving curving nearly towards horizontal at b so the shape should be carefully drawn okay thank you very much